Hello. I expect you've seen one of these showing the kings and queens of England in all their glory. We as a nation certainly have an appetite for anything to do with our royal family and their history, whether it's a Philippa Gregory novel, the latest series of The Crown, or an episode of the classic Blackadder. There's something about our history that fascinates us. And of course, we're living history now, as plans are afoot to celebrate the platinum jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II in a couple of years. Contrast that with poor old, or should I say poor young, Lady Jane Grey, reigning for a mere nine days. There will no doubt be similar lists for other rulers around the world, but there will always be a start date and an end date. The time will eventually come for someone else to take over. The history of God's people in the Old Testament is pretty similar. The history books record different kings reigning for varying lengths of time. But unlike this chart, the records of the kings of Israel and of Judah that you can read in one and two kings have another important piece of information. They tell us what sort of job they did. Did they do good or evil in the eyes of the Lord? And rather shockingly, none of the 20 kings of Israel are recorded as doing good. And of the 20 kings of Judah, just eight are described as doing good in the eyes of the Lord. It's not a very impressive tally, really, is it? One of those eight is Azariah, who goes by the name of Uzziah. So that's what we'll call him. He has one of the longest reigns, an impressive 52 years from the age of 16. So for many people, living under the reign of King Uzziah would have been all that they had known. I guess the transition between kings would have been a very unsettling time for God's people, as it can be for many nations with a new leader or ruler. What's this new era going to be like? How will life change? And crucially, will they be a good ruler or not? This is where we find the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. He has a vision of God in heaven, firmly rooted in this period of history. It takes place in the year that King Uzziah died. So the king is dead, long live the king. Who's the next one? It's interesting that Isaiah doesn't say in the year that Jotham became king, but in the year that King Uzziah died. So he seems to focus more on the loss of a good king than the arrival of the next one. What's certain is that we are one of the, those uncertain periods in Judah's history between kings. And what does he see? We can read in chapter six of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And he goes on to describe this amazing vision of God on his throne in heaven, surrounded by these creatures who constantly call to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne. Rulers of this world will come and go, good ones and bad ones, long reigns and short reigns, but one thing is constant. There is a throne in heaven whose occupant has never changed and never will. Let's have a think. What are the reasons for a change in king or queen? I think there are three. Firstly, and the most common, is that they die. Most of our kings and queens have ruled until the end of their lives and the throne has passed on to their heir. Alternatively, they may abdicate, they may decide they don't want the job, as happened with Edward VIII. The other way, of course, and this hasn't happened for quite some time, is that the throne might be stolen from them. An assassination, dying in battle, or a coup of some sort, and there's a new king on the throne, with the old one either murdered or locked up. Did any of these things happen in order to stop God from being king? Of course not. Who could possibly God's, take God's place on the throne by force? No one. There's no one like God. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. No one could ever defeat him. The devil has tried, but God has always been and always will be victorious. Would God ever step down, abdicate from the throne? No way. Later on in Isaiah, he writes these words. God speaking, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. And could God ever be assassinated or die of old age? 
Well, the Bible tells us that God is immortal. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Paul writes these words to Timothy. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light. So the answer is no. God will not abdicate, be overthrown or die. Yet here is the massive plot twist. God, who is immortal, became human in the form of Jesus, lived among us and died. This is mystery all, writes Charles Wesley, the immortal dies. But because God is king over everything, even death, he raised Jesus to life on the third day. Because, Peter says in his Pentecost sermon, it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And because Jesus was obedient to God, his father, and went to the cross for us, God has given Jesus the prime seat in heaven at his right hand. The writer to the Hebrews says this. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And from Ephesians, this is what Paul writes. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So Jesus is now seated at the Father's right hand in heaven, and here, sitting down means a successful completion of the task. So rulers come and rulers go, but this is the reality. God the Father is on the throne, and he always will be, with Jesus seated at his right hand. Let's pray that this reality shapes and moulds our thoughts and actions more and more. Let's pray. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Almighty God, we thank you that you have always been and you will always be the one who is seated on the throne. You are from everlasting to everlasting and no one compares to you. We thank you, Lord, for this reality and we pray that it will fill our hearts and our minds more and more so that we have a far more accurate, a far more biblical perspective on our world and on our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.